Chuff is going to sleep in, or Arod is going to sleep in. Uh, all right. So, what? Uh, so last week, um, Alan did the the uh, kind of the summary of the session in the campaign log. So hopefully, we'll be able to continue uh, doing that as we go. Um, I'm going to just because this was the first session and I'm sure I screwed some things up and confused some things. Uh, I'm just going to um, also add a few notes just so we know where we left off. Um, but in the future, it'll be up to you guys to, to put those in the, uh, the session summary. Um, so in the campaign log, um, Alan made an entry and uh, I guess, Alan, do you want to go ahead and read what you wrote since it's in your voice? Sure. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> on the way to Fandolin, we came across two dead horses on the road. While investigating, we were ambushed by four goblins. Burali, Duradin, and Alan were incapacitated before they could react, and Makashi fell seconds later. Er Erod and Archon, using the wagon for cover, managed to fight off the raiders, killing all but one who escaped down a path off the main road. After stabilizing the wounded, the two heroes of the day loaded their bleeding companions on, onto the cart and continued toward Fandolin, arriving at around midnight. The injured relaxed in the inn and soon retired for the evening while Archon and Era delivered supplies and sought healing for the party's wounds. Morning has come, and we gather to take stock and consider our next move. All right, perfect. Uh, so the things that I'm going to add to that uh, are that... Um, so I, I'm not sure how if if I confused this or anything or omitted it and later fixed it. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but basically the supplies uh, were delivered to Barthen's Provisions uh, but have not been settled yet for your uh, payment. Uh, you did learn that Gundren and Sildar have not arrived in the town, and you have identified that the horses that you found dead were their horses. Um, there was a conversation with Rorali, I think it was Makashi and Lenar, at the bar, uh, where they learned about some orc raiders uh, that have been seen on the Tribor Trail, and that the town master is looking for someone to run them off. Um, Makashi and Rorali both uh, paid four copper pieces for some ale, <clears throat> and Duradin did some ale and some scotch. So that was eight copper pieces. Sister uh, Garelli gave a potion of healing to Archon and to Makashi. The party has had a full rest and should all be at full health. And one day has elapsed. Uh, you all are also short um, one silver piece for the uh, the lodging. So make sure all that stuff is updated in your character sheets. All right. It is uh, about 9.30 a.m., 9 a.m. <clears throat> uh, it appears that Erod is sleeping in. So what would you guys like to do? Uh, I'm going to wake up, say my prayers for the day, prepare my spells, and then go downstairs for breakfast. All right. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. Go down for breakfast. I'm going to head over to the temple to speak with the uh, healer, Sister Gurley. All right. And that was Makashi? Yep. All right. So you're going to go over here. Um, Archon and Alan? I'm going to head down with people having breakfast. I'm going to place Chuff's hand in a bucket of warm water. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then... Uh, Head over, yeah. I'll head down to the uh, the inn. <clears throat> All right. And your ad is. Oops. 
Uh, Erod is. I'll say that's asleep. Okay, so everybody is down at breakfast. Erod's hand is in some uh, warm water. Uh, Mikashi is making his way over to the shrine. I'd like to start a conversation with you, Archon. Are you there? Yes. So, so uh, uh, Alan uh, would like to uh, apologize for tossing a chamber pot at you last night. <laughs> <laughs> he explains that uh, he was, uh, you know, after that first encounter, it didn't quite go. His first uh, violent encounter didn't go quite as he as he planned. So he was upset that night. And then when he came barging in in the middle of the night, he kind of lost it for a second, but. Uh, he didn't mean it. Uh, no troubles, friend. And I mean, it, it missed by a mile. <laughs> also, um, I'm guessing, this may not be true, but I, I'm guessing you're not from around these parts. I'm um, not from too far off. I mean, the only reason I ask is because so I, I grew up in a town, you know, not uh, about this size. And, uh, uh, Typically, people don't appreciate it when you go banging on their doors or flying into their rooms in the middle of the night. I lean over at this point and I'm like, no, friend, he's just an asshole. <laughs> okay, as long as it's intentional. <laughs> and but I if slap, we can. Uh, Archon on the back and then I go back to my meal. Yes, everything I do is definitely intentional. <laughs> okay, but I mean, if. if Perchance, we want the people in these towns that we, we may be traveling through to be our allies. We might not want to horrify them in the middle of the night. Oh, just, just, a, just a thought. I think they were quite happy. I mumble with uh, a mouthful of food saying good luck with that. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> All right, so what do you, um, so that was side conversation. Uh, are you guys doing anything else other than just uh, ordering food and eating? I would, after, after eating, I would like to head off to the temple also. Um, after we're done eating, I'm going to go to that fellow who's got our pay. All right. <clears throat> Anybody yeah. else? Uh, should we all? convene at some point to come up with a game plan before wandering in different directions? Probably. Well, I've gone ahead already and to the, towards the temple, so I figure I'll meet up with you after I'm done with whatever's going on in there. I'm going to eat and wait for Erod to get up, see if he actually makes it. All right. All right, let, let's just all agree to, to meet back here at the end when we're done with basic town stuff and we can, we can chat about what we're going to do. Sure. I'll be right here. All right, so Duradan is going to be on his way over to Barton's Provisions. Uh, you guys are going to hang out here, I guess, to wait to meet up. Is that right? And I'm heading off to the temple. And you're heading off to the temple. And all right, so Irad is still asleep. I'm going to hang out with Archon because I'm a little worried that he might get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, <clears throat> so Makashi, uh, you are at the Shrine of Luck. And it's open, right? Do I have to push the door? Or open a door or something. So <clears throat> the shrine is, uh, I guess, I probably should describe the shrine. <laughs> so you walk know. up to the shrine. There is a sign. This is the Shrine of Luck. Um, and it is the appears to be the only temple in the town square. And uh, it's, it's made of stones. Um, it looks like the same stones that are kind of made from some of the other ruins around town. And um, it is, the door is uh, open. 
I step inside. All right. Uh, kind of working, moving around, doing some housekeeping is uh, uh, Sister Gorelli, who you met the previous night. He's the only one in there? She's the only one in there. All right. I uh, hail her and begin to approach. All right. And she turns and smiles at you and asks, uh, how are you feeling this morning? Much better, sister. I greatly appreciate your efforts and tending to my associates and I. And he's trying to struggle through his uh, accent a bit uh, to speak the common language uh, in these parts. Uh, he bows towards her as he did last night very deeply. Uh, he takes out a piece of parchment and says, uh, for uh, gratitude, I wrote a uh, poem for you, and he hands it towards her. And uh, as she opens it, or if she opens it, uh, he explains it's it's written in his uh, native language, Kozakuran. Uh, does she open it, or does she just take the the rolled parchment? Uh, she takes the roll of parchment and uh, kind of tilts her head, uh, almost, well, she's happy to hear that, that obviously that you're doing uh, better this morning. Um, she takes the parchment and she actually, she, let's see. She doesn't immediately open it. Um, she says, "This this isn't uh, this isn't necessary." But thank you very very much. Um, is there anything on the outside of it that that would indicate a language, or is it just clear? Uh, it would be written in a very uh, kind of fancy common on the uh, on the band that's keeping it rolled. Uh, it says, Poem of Gratitude. All right. Uh, I am going to... All right. She, um... she starts to open it as you're explaining about it. And he explains, it is in my native tongue. It says, a light granting hope, a warmth piercing the winter, and link fated souls. Um, <laughs> does she know what it means? Like, would would she be able to to kind of glean the meaning from that? Is it something that is a? Well, no, she does an inside check, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Let me do that. It's like the DM has become the player. Yeah. Well, and I don't have a character sheet for her, so. <laughs> um, actually, you know what? I might. Do you see 15 and recognize that he's a weeb? A what? A weeb. Weeboo? Oh. <laughs> Can't you tell from the portrait, man? He's a real deal. All right, so she runs an insight check. Let's say it's a, a 15. 
15, that'll do it. Okay. And uh, he would uh, mean that the poem is in reference to pretty much her and her actions. Uh, like grant, granting hope, like light meaning uh, her uh, clerical position, a uh, guardian of light. Uh, her warmth piercing the winter, uh, her presence last night uh, while it was uh, pretty uh, cold. Uh, it was a kind of a dire situation that uh, Mikashi and his other companions had been through. And uh, she helped to kindling faded souls, uh, her healing the party, uh, rejuvenating them. And it's, it's a very, uh, the imagery is supposed to take precedence over like her being able to tell all that, but that's what she could infer from what he said. It's not in common, though. It's not written in common. It's written in Kozakuren. Okay. So she, she has a, as she's reading this and as you're explaining, she has a, a smile creeps across her face. And she says, this is, this is uh, very touching. And uh, the, the light of, of luck and good fortune has shined upon your group. And Tamora and myself are very pleased with this gift. Thank you. And he bows again. And she returns the bow. Is there anything else I can do for, for you and your party? I was hoping to procure a couple more potions of healing for the wizards that saved our lives yesterday. If it were not for them, he would not have made it to town. Uh, or the warlock and the wizard. She she smiles and says, "Yes, I I could." The there was a uh, your tiefling uh, gave a generous donation. Uh, last night for for the healing potions and uh, there were some that your party did not take so i would be glad to uh to give some and she gives uh four of them so you now have four healing potions and no payment is needed excellent and he bows again your patronage or your your uh what what's word uh mutters under his breath your help will guide us in the coming days and he takes the potions and puts them in his satchel and uh, begins heading out the door uh before bowing one last time uh, before you head out the door, she says, perhaps, perhaps luck has shone on me today. Um, perhaps there's something that your, you and your group could, could assist me with. Of course, sister. Um, my superiors, I, I'm part of the, the Harpers, um, I'm part of the Harpers, we're, uh, we're a network of adventurers, and we we advocate equality and shine a, a dim light on abuse and oppression, uh, abuse of power. Recently, my superiors um, they've asked me to undertake a delicate mission, and I haven't been very successful with it. We need to. We're looking for information about a spell book that belonged to a legendary mage, mage named Bo Gentle. And 
we believe that the location of this book is known by uh, a, somebody named Agatha. Uh, she's a banshee, and I have not been able to locate her or have her appear for me. I'm wondering if perhaps luck would shine favorably on you. Uh, maybe you could help me with this. Of course. But we would uh, have to attend to the business of finding our patron rock seeker as he has not made it to town like we have he is still missing along with his traveling companion she nods in understanding of course of course that's that would take priority for you but if if during your travels if you perhaps um have an opportunity to uh, to seek her out uh, it would be most most grateful unfortunately we have meager um meager resources here um your your generous donation last night was able to uh, i was able to use much of what i have so i don't have a lot left but i'd be happy to uh give you three potions of healing um if you're able to to bring me information on this lost spell book and consider it done sister i will inform the others thank you and she gives you the location of it. Um, she says that it is uh, to the west, northwest of Coneyberry. There's a trail that leads off of the, the old ruined town. And that's the uh, location of the, the Banshee? Of where she should be, yep. Okay. Cool. You said to the west. Uh, to the north, to the northwest of of Coneyberry. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. So as um, we're kind of wrapping that discussion up or that conversation, Rorali comes in the door. Sure. Are you? It, it's Mikashi that's in there, right? Yes. Mikashi. Uh, as he's leaving, I guess, right? Uh, I'm on my way out the door. All right. So I pat you on the back and I say, "We're meeting up in the. We're meeting up back in the inn, whenever you're done with, whatever you have to do." And I, I am done him, here. I will return to the end. I'll see you there. And Mikashi nods and begins to walk off. And I turn over and I nod at uh, Sister Gorelli. Mm -hmm. Gorelli. And I say, uh, good day, Sister Gorelli. And um, I wanted to say thank you very much for all the help you did. Uh, last night. I know my friend Archon can be a bit of a uh, an arsehole to be honest with you, but uh, he, he meant it in the best. We were ambushed yesterday and uh, we were at the pretty much the end of the life. I'm sure I, I'm fairly certain that I saw the other side before I came back. So I just wanted to be very appreciative. I know you came after we were already a little bit healed uh, and I just wanted you to know that Archon meant it, meant it in all good. He saw me and all a lot of us down on the ground fighting for our lives. So I wanted to come and thank you. And I reach in my pocket and I take out a gold coin. And um, as I reach her, I hold out my other hand, almost like asking for her hand. She smiles <clears throat> and... And she says that the the blessings of luck and good fortune from Tamora uh, work in mysterious ways. And even the most abrasive personalities have, have the blessings occasionally uh, of the goddess. And it was fortune that brought him to me last night so I could help you. Um, and 
before she you hand the gold to her, she asks you uh, how your shoulder is. Um, and then she sees that you're handing her uh, gold and... I'm not. I That's my other hand. That hand is only has only reached behind me. Uh, she hasn't seen me grab anything yet. I'm holding up my other hand. Oh, oh, okay. I'm like, I, yeah, like I want to... All right, so uh, let me ask you that. Which hand uh, are you holding out? The one with the, it, from the it wounded shoulder? My, or? It, oh, shoot, which side? It is my, which hand is this? My right shoulder that was shot, and my left hand is the one that's out. So my right hand is reaching back, and my left hand is out. Okay. <clears throat> she reaches out to, to shake your hand. Uh, she, she clasps your hand um, and kind of makes a movement to shake it. And she, she glances at your shoulder and asks uh, how your shoulder is. And as she asks that, I, I sort of roll it as I reach and grab a gold piece out of my bag. And with my other hand as I'm rolling it, I start saying, um, it's doing very, very well. Thank you very much. You, uh, y you were a lot of help last night. I was able to get a very restful sleep um, despite the, the circumstances last night. And as I say that, I bring over my right hand with the gold piece and I clasp her hand and I slip it in her hand and, I'm, and I say, I know, uh, I forgot to ask what, what, whom you served, but Tamara, her, her mercy, um, I'm glad to give a donation to this church or to this temple, I guess is what they're called, to this temple. Um, and I will not take no for an answer this time. And I pat her hand um, and that's where I stop. Okay, what you said. She smiles graciously and offers no argument and says, uh, may you have tomorrow's future blessings. Thank you very much for your generosity. Um, Thank you very, very much. And she she does mention to you um, uh, she says she says um, I'm almost embarrassed to mention this. However, I was just talking with your uh, companion and I did mention uh, something that we are trying to uh, I have been tasked to locate a uh, a spell book, and I, I gave him some details. Um, if there's anything that you uh, or your group can do to to help me uh, in this matter, it would be extremely much appreciated. And I say that should be no problem, sister, sister Gareli. But could you do me a favor and repeat it for me? I'm sure you noticed, and Mikashi does not have the easiest accent to understand sometimes and I just want to make sure I have all the all the details correctly and she, you don't have to repeat it for me <laughs> <laughs> she she gives a small chuckle she says oh alas that's uh is it's not a problem um we have a lot of a lot of people that are not from these parts come through so I'm I'm used to it uh he was fine and so she relays the, the same information she gave Makashi. And along with the Harpers and all of that information? Yes. And I say, the Harpers? Never heard of that one before. A network of adventurers, you say? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, we are adventurers and uh, we, we advocate uh, equality. And, uh, you know, we... we we frown upon the abuse of power and uh, oppression of people. And, and I, we, uh, I, I go ahead. And we seek uh, information around the land to try and thwart tyrants and, um, you know, oppose oppressive governments that grow too strong. Uh, we try and help the weak as much as we can and the poor. And, uh, I we have a a network across the north, and it's uh, this is what we try and do. I smile at her, and I um, I give her a a gracious nod, and I say, I like the sound of that. 
if you ever need anything, any help with any, um, with any of that, feel free to ask me or my adventurers. I'm sure I could be found somewhere in the north, if not found here. Is there anywhere I could find the Harpers aside from you? Uh, we are located everywhere. Uh, it's not obvious who we are. Um, but if you do ask us and we are one, we will certainly let you know. That sounds shady as fuck. Um, uh, I say... She she gives um, um, some names of people to look for in other cities. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I just, I don't have them right now. All right, that's fine. Um, I say, well, thank it you very meant much. It wasn't <laughs> <laughs> Um, I say thank you very much, and I ask her. Um, I was a bit, I was a bit drowsy last night. Um, could you remind me what, what this temple is for? Like, is there a specific shrine here, or a specific purpose for this? He, she, she looks surprised but eager, and she explains that this is the, this is the shrine of luck. Uh, this is dedicated to Tamora, uh, my goddess of luck and good fortune. And uh, I am happy that she was able to shine uh, a light for you last night in your time of need. Uh, it was luck that and fortune that brought you by to uh, to meet with me, and I'm very happy about that and glad to serve. Uh, well, okay. Well, I, um, I smile largely at her, and I... Um... And I say, well, it was very, it is my pleasure meeting you, Sister Gareli. I look forward to seeing you again, uh, hopefully in better health next time. May luck be upon you. <laughs> and I start walking away, and before I walk out, I turn around, I smile at her, and I give her a wink, and then I walk out. All right. And go back to the inn. And then you go back to the inn. All right. And, okay, so Makashi and Rorali are essentially back at the inn. Uh, Duradin, uh, you're up. <clears throat> I'm going to head over here to Barthen's uh, provisions and see if he's up and about yet. Uh, okay. So you arrive at Barthen's provisions, and uh, he is up and about doing some housekeeping. Uh, you can see his... He's got two clerks. Um... Both of them younger, younger men, younger boys, uh, I guess in their teens, uh, helping him uh, with some inventory and moving some boxes around. Uh, looks like they've been, they're trying to unload and organize the provisions that arrived last night. All right, well, I'm going to uh, knock on the door and see if he notices me there. Uh, the, the door is open. Uh, then I'm just going to walk on in. All right. And I'm not subtle. I'm wearing scale mail, so. Is your weapon out? No, it's hanging on my belt. Okay. Shields on my back, weapons on my belt. You know, I'm not there to, for a fight, obviously. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, the younger boys uh, approaches you cautiously and says, Hi, hi, mister. Uh, how, how can I help you? My name's Deridan Lad. Where's your, uh, where's, uh, Barthen at? Um, he, he looks behind him, um, on a ladder that Elmar is, uh, climbing up, and he says, um, uh, uh, miss, Mr. Barthen is, is working some stock. Uh, would you like me to get him? Aye, lad, would you? Uh, sure. And he scurries over, and... Uh, you can see him talking to Elmar and pointing to you, and uh, he nods and kind of gives him hands over the box that he was carrying to the the young boy, who takes his spot, and he comes over to you. Uh, he says, "How uh, how are you? Uh, you must be part of the band from last night." I am here on the uh, behalf of uh, it was Gurdjian, right? Um, Gundren. Yep. Gundren. I'm here on behalf of. Uh, Gundren Rock Seeker, we uh, we're delivering some goods to your shop here. Ah, yes. Um, your uh, compatriots uh, Archon and Irad last night uh, helped me uh, unload them. Um, 
some terrible business uh, about Gundren. Uh, we, we haven't seen him arrive yet. You haven't? He hasn't uh, arrived or sent a message forward yet? No. I'm a little concerned about it. Ah, he should have been here days ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I heard that the, his horses, his horse and Sildar's horse, were were found in the on the Tribor Trail. Um, that's not good. There's there's been some uh, goblin activity up on the trail recently. I'm I'm hoping that nothing bad's happened. I have heard about that. I've heard a few rumors about the goblin and orc raiders. I was wondering if uh, if you might know about where they're coming from. Is is a camp being identified? Well, the, the raiders are local. Um, that's a whole other problem that we have. Um, that actually impacts us more than the, the orcs. Uh, the orcs seem to seem to keep themselves to the Tribor Trail. Um, locally, though, we have um, we have some some issues with uh, with some ruffians. They call themselves the Red Bands. Uh, do you know about where their uh, their main camp might be located? Um, they're uh, they're they kind of roam around town. Um, they keep to themselves mostly uh or they they kind of there's a there's a tavern across town that they seem to hole up in um nobody ever goes over there but occasionally they they wander around town and uh harass the the locals wonder if they might have something to do with when mr dorak seeker ah I suppose I'll have to go have a chat with these lads, and, and but in the meantime, I was wondering about the pay that you were supposed to uh, issue out. Um, yes, uh, I I do have that, um, and and he he kind of looks sheepishly and says, "I, I, I no offense, uh, I." Unfortunately, he was not able to meet your party last night. Uh, it was very quick and chaotic when we were trying to to bring Lady Gorelli by. But um, if if we could wait until Archon or Erod show up, I would be glad to settle up with them. It's no offense. I just I don't know anybody, and I want to make sure um, you know everybody's getting what they need. All right. I suppose I'll have to drag those layabouts up here to get my pay. So uh, I will return shortly. Oh, uh, where was whereabouts was that tavern you were talking about? Uh, the tavern is on the east side of town. Um, he does also add that the the red brands are have been also shaking down some of the local businesses um, and making the the town master look like a fool. Well, and, I suppose uh, we'll put an end to that behavior. Uh. There's something you can, you know, you uh, with these young men here working in your shop, there's nothing quite like a good beating to put a lad back on the right path. He smiles. I would welcome that. I certainly, we, a lot of us in the town would welcome that. That is for certain. Um, you know, I, um, Gundren has a couple of brothers, um, Nundro and Thardin. Uh, they're supposed to be camped around outside of town. Um, they are supposed to come by every couple of days, but I haven't seen them in about a week. And I'm expecting them to return any day now to resupply. But um, do you know about where they were camped? No, they were they were outside of town. I'm not sure exactly where they were camped. Um, but if you if you do come across them, uh, please send them by. Um, I'm getting concerned about them, especially with the news uh, that Gundren has uh, not showed up. Does your town have a, a ranger or a tracker of some sort? A huntsman, a woodsman? Um, he kind of has a one of those uh, I don't really know kind of grins. Uh, he does say that there is a um, there is a woodworker 
but I'm not I'm not sure that's what you're looking for. Um, and you can find. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Barth. And I'm going to go uh, talk to these lads, get our pay, and then we'll uh, go have a conversation with those rowdy uh, louts. Okay, he nods and thanks you. And um, I look forward to, to seeing uh, Archon and Irad uh, again this morning. And he's going to take his leave and head back to the tavern. All right. All right, so everybody is back at the tavern. What would you like to do? I would like to find, uh, is it Archon or whatever? That was uh, the one he, uh, Barthen said. Uh, yeah, Archon. I'm going to find him. All right, I th uh, Archon, where is everybody in the the kind of the lower, like the the tavern part of the inn? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Archon is sitting to show up. sitting down and eating, and was waiting for Aaron, which I All think right. showed up at some point. I see Chuff uh, online or Erod online, <clears throat> so. Um, Sorry, guys, I slept in. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So when, when you wake, um, roll a... Roll a... <laughs> straight up... You know what? Roll a constitution check. <laughs> With disadvantage. <laughs> ah, so funny. And to do that, you just need to click on uh, Constitution on the left column. There you go. <laughs> yes. Okay, so as you wake up, um, yes. you notice that your hand is in a <laughs> bowl of lukewarm water and your bed is soaked. <laughs> uh, you, you might. Is. You might wish to clean yourself up before you go down to the uh, <laughs> to the tavern. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> All right. So uh, Irod cleans himself up, and so he heads down. It's probably about uh, probably about ten thirty in the morning, and uh, the party is gathered around uh, downstairs, waiting for you to come down. I saved him a, a plate of food. Thanks. Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. Oh, morning, sleepyhead. Morning. That's a nice new robe you've got. <laughs> Eyes him suspiciously. <laughs> hmm. Akashi sees Archon and Arad and... Uh, he approaches them if they're in the like five feet apart in the same vicinity, eating and whatever. Um, and uh, he goes up and he says, "A token of gratitude for saving our lives the other day. Without you, this mission would out have been lost." And he takes out two potions from his satchel and hands one to Archon and hands uh, the other to Erod, bowing as he does so. Oh, I say, uh, thanks. I'll, I'll save this in case the group would, would need them once again. As will I. I'm certain we will. <laughs> well, what I'm going to need you to do uh, in, the, in the short term is... Uh, Lead yourself over to the provision store and get our pay. Uh, yeah, if we're all ready to go over, we can head over that way. Or what's our plan? Everybody seemed to have different plans this morning. Uh, also, I've picked up a bit of news. Um, I don't know if you know if you if, if you've found this out yet yourself. Uh, our uh, friend Rockseeker hasn't arrived in town yet, and uh, no one's seen him. And he should have been here well before we were. 
Also, yes. app apparently his brothers were camping nearby and they haven't been seen lately either. This concerns me as well. Is it common knowledge at this point now that, that uh, those were the horses of Gundren and his companion? To the party, party yes. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. Also, so, apparently... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, Alan's feeling really terrible. So Gundren took a chance on him uh, with this mission after he'd been trying for a long time to find a job. And so he feels like he owes it to go and either save Gundren on the very slim chance that he's alive or uh, find his body and give it a proper burial. So that's kind of his primary thing right now. All right. And on the second bit of news, apparently there's been a bit of trouble coming out of a tavern on the east side of town. Uh, a group of, well, they, uh, Barthen uh, referred to them as raiders. But uh, really what it sounds like is just a bunch of troublemakers. They might have something to do with this. They've been shaking down shops and harassing people. Oh, no. Oh, no. So oh. I say we go and take a hammer to them. Just to, you know, set it back on the path of righteousness. As I hear that, I, um... <clears throat> oh, man. I... I immediately walk out the door and I start heading to the east part of town in search of this tavern. Uh, huh, I wonder where she's off to. I, went, I say uh, I wouldn't get in her way. Yeah, Makashi looks confused. <laughs> All right, so did not did, stop Mikashi her? Was, <clears throat> Mikashi heard the conversation between me and the e a, a rod last night, right? Was he yeah. Kibashi? That was eavesdropping. Right. Does she look like she's going out to kick someone's in it, kick someone in the dick? I oh, yeah, assume I, so. I look angry as fuck as I walked out. Then I am going to follow her because I don't want her to walk into something alone if she's going off, for, you know, to pick a fight. Uh, so, clang, 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 clang. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Ah, lass, wait up. Yeah, my legs aren't quite as long as yours. I, uh, oh, I man. I'm, I'm going with them, too. <laughs> this sounds like a bad plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm so will rush out after. All you hear is... very angrily. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Alan uh, calls to the people who are still sitting that... Uh, welcomes them to join. <laughs> but I just sat down for breakfast. <laughs> I know, I only got through half an egg. Erod stands up, looks down at his plate, sighs, and then walks out the door behind him. I'm just like, take it with you. This could be great. <laughs> you have to go. Take it, take it, uh, get a box. She's going to put on a show, man. <laughs> uh... Mikasa she wants to confirm with Duridan if uh, the ruffians at this other tavern, they're supposedly uh, connected to Rockseeker's disappearance, or is this a separate thing? Possibly. We're about to go find out. <laughs> All right. Oh, so Wait, bad. how do it's, we know that? It seems <laughs> speculative it's that the... It's called investigation. It seems speculative that the bandits are cooperating with goblins. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't... At the worst case scenario, we're going to put them back on the path of the straight and narrow and teach them a life of righteousness. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. So, do, do I find this tavern? Uh, uh, Alan's going to try, uh, most likely fruitlessly, to... Uh, to calm down Rurali and remind her that uh, uh, Gundren could be out there somewhere, like in bad shape, but we, you know, time's a wasting. Oh God, I uh, I turn around to you, probably faster than you've ever seen anybody turn and look at you, with the most just scathing look 
<laughs> just I'm glaring at you as I'm continuing to march on looking for this tavern. I look I look say, out for that black hole. <laughs> and I say, um, well, if he's out there bleeding out somewhere, I'm going to go beat it out of one of these assholes. And these assholes, and they keep on going. Continuous, continuing looking for the stupid tavern. I look at Arod, and I look up at the sky, and I said, yep, cold front has moved in. <laughs> Can I roll, like, an intimidation check or anything like that? Don't intimidate the party. <laughs> sure. I don't know. He he came up, you said it, you came up to me very, uh, very shakily. Oh, no, it wasn't that bad. You were not intimidating. I was too distracted. All right. I well, I have not rolled well once. <laughs> All right. Well, if, if that's how you feel, I got your back. But you know, don't lose sight of the objective here. And then uh, I'm following. We're going to spread the word as I'm pulling my hammer out. <clears throat> All right. So the folks that are in the inn, are you following? Is anybody left in the end? <clears throat> I see Makashi and Ar uh, Archon, is, I guess, is outside, so I guess you're following Archon? Uh, sure, strolling in the back. Oh. All right. All right. Oops. All right, so everybody is uh, making their way up to the inn. <clears throat> and uh... I'm, I'm keeping a good distance between me and them. Okay. So they're usually eating your breakfast. As we're walking over, Alan's going to ask, like, why anybody thinks these guys have anything to do with the disappearance. I kind of missed something. We're going to ask them if they. Well, even if we do ask them, they're probably not going to give up if they do give up information if they do have anything about it. So. Well, that's why we'll inspire them to be nice, upstanding citizens. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Whistling along cheerfully while yeah. shouldering my hammer. Makashi will observe for the time being. And we'll just advise caution. As we're new in these parts, in this town, we don't want to cause uh, a ruckus that we cannot handle. Let me um no, this is gonna be so bad. Let me roll. <laughs> Why are you doing Let's see <laughs> Duradin. Uh roll a roll an intelligent uh no, what do we, what do I want you to do? You gotta tell me that, boss, you're the DM. I want you to roll a roll, roll a history check. I'm too I excited mean. about spreading the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay. <laughs> All right. So everybody's at the the front of the. Uh, let's see. This is the Sleeping Giant Inn. Oh God! All right. That's a and, bad omen. <laughs> and uh, Archon, I'm gonna assume you're a little closer to the party than. 30 feet. Uh, nope. I'm staying back. Nope. Actually, I'll move to this little alley. Okay. Uh, before we go in there, I am going this to cast a shield of faith on myself. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I, me plus two armor class. I'm going to cast shield on myself. Uh, or not shield, uh, mage armor, rather. Alright. Oh, God. As, okay. uh, as we approach the the door of the sleeping giant in i'm rolling up my sleeves and oh man i <clears throat> all right no you know what i'm owning this decision owning it uh i go up to the door and i absolutely just smash my foot in it and i make the door just slam open and i and i say all right you fuckers which one of you knows where gundren is and with that, we're going to take a quick break. 
<laughs> this is gonna be. This is so bad. This is awful. How quick of a break? Uh, about five or ten minutes. Enough time to smoke a cigarette. All right, guys, stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back for our break. So hang All on. Right. Okay, I'm going to go do that.